So there's a crisis of credibility with the media that we need to talk about. Trust in media has declined to an all-time low, and many news professionals are determined to do something about it. Faith in society's central institutions, especially in government and the media, is the glue that holds society together. The glue was visibly dissolving a decade ago, and now, for many millions of Americans, disappeared entirely. By the numbers here, for the first time ever, fewer than half of all Americans have trust in traditional media, according to data from Edelman's annual Trust Barometer, shared exclusively with Axios. Trust in social media, social media as well, has hit an all-time low of 27%. Here we go. 56% of Americans agree with the statement that, quote, journalists and reporters are purposely trying to mislead people by saying things they know are false or gross exaggerations. 56%. 58% think that most news organizations are more concerned with supporting an ideology or political position than with informing the public. When Edelman repolled Americans after the election, the figures had deteriorated even further with 57% of Democrats trusting the media and only 18% of Republicans. So now, let me show you this chart. This is absolutely incredible. Look at how it plummets. Just 46% of Americans overall trust the media. 46%. Now, this is beyond embarrassing, particularly for this reason. It's almost like the media is set up by its nature as an institution to be popular. Because, think about it, what's the job of the media? The job of the media is to give you facts and information and educate you and hold the powerful accountable. That's the whole point of the media. So it's almost like the entire field is supposed to be, these are the people that you like and trust. These are the people who are giving you information, which would make you like them, and also, they're on your side against powerful interests, whether it's the government or corporations, military, industrial complex, whatever it might be. They're here to look out for you. And you get to see their faces all the time. I mean, print is a little different, but if, if you're talking about TV, you could see them all the time. Like, every day, these people are put right in front of your eyes. So you're supposed to, on some level, develop some sort of a connection, some sort of parasocial relationship, where it's like, here's the person that I trust giving me information and looking out for me. So by its nature, people are supposed to look at the media and be like, yeah, these are, of course these are the people I like. Of course. But only... 46 per less than half of the country overall trust the media. Some of these numbers are beyond mind-boggling. That 56% of the country basically says that they think journalists and reporters mislead on purpose or grossly exaggerate. 58% say that they put politics before they put informing the public. So in other words, it's one thing. If you give people the facts and information and then give your opinion after that based off the facts and information... People respect that, but what people are saying is it's the opposite. First comes my narrative and my political opinions. Then I try to take whatever facts, cherry pick them, and fit them into that narrative. And again, 58% of the country says that's how it's done. And guys, you know what the crazy thing is? They're right. The people are right. I mean, let's go through one by one here. Well, not necessarily one by one, but... Let's talk about the major players in the game, starting on the right. One American News Network and Newsmax. Worst of the worst. Feeding conspiracies all day long. They literally made people believe that Joe Biden wasn't going to be inaugurated even after Joe Biden won. And there were over 60 court cases that said that this is over and the Electoral College certified the, re the results. They were still acting like, no, Trump might become president. Liars, conspiracy theorists, totally sycophantic to Trump. Fox News. We, do we even need to get started? They have the longest track record of terribleness. Nothing but Republican Party sycophants. They're the Republican Party propaganda arm. That's what they are. They're not telling you the truth. MSNBC, CNN. MSNBC is the worst defender of the Democratic Party Apologist Network. The propaganda arm of the Democratic Party. CNN. Also propaganda of the Democratic Party, but sprinkle in some establishment Republicans as well. They do a little bit of the establishment wing of both sides is reasonable. That's sort of their lane. And then you have the nightly news. Again, pro-establishment is the main flavor and variety of nightly news stuff that you see. Now, when it comes to print outlets, some of them do a good job, but of course they don't have as many eyeballs on them because people have the attention span of a gnat, and so nobody wants to read dense articles. But like, okay, print does a decent job on many fronts, but also 
in many ways, they do a terrible job. And a lot of the opinion sections of, uh, of the print outlets are horrendous, whether it's Wall Street Journal, New York Times, whatever it might be. So people don't trust the media, man. And they're right not to trust the media. They're right. And listen, social media also isn't trusted. That's totally understandable, because what do you mean by social media? Do you mean Facebook? Do you mean Twitter? Because, yeah, I mean, ultimately, even... Even in a best case scenario, it's like a bathroom wall. Like those outlets are supposed to be free and open where anybody could post. So if you're going there for detailed analysis or factual reporting, yeah, of course you're not going to get it. But I would argue that's a category area. That's not even really what social media is for. You know what I mean? Like Facebook, Twitter. Um, it's just like a free and open forum, or at least in theory, that's what it's supposed to be. But like this goes hand in hand also with the degradation of all other institutions in this country. You know, like people do not trust that they have a fair shot at life anymore. Because the institutions at every level have failed them. Corporate America has failed them. The government has failed them. I mean, all of Washington, D.C. is run off of rank, open bribery and corruption. Ever since the late 1970s, early 1980s, when they started allowing money in politics, basically unlimited. So the people who are being represented are the billionaires and the corporations and the well-off. And the rules are rigged in their favor and against average people. And so average people are getting screwed at every level institutionally. And the watchdogs of the powerful are not watchdogs of the powerful. They're partisan hacks. They're doing propaganda for the Democrats or the Republicans. So of course, of course this was going to happen. But the crazy thing is there will be zero self-reflection. because And it goes back to the, to the theory espoused by Matt Taibbi in his book Hate Inc. Which is like, you have MSNBC, their main arguments are, hate the Republicans, hate your fellow American voters. Then you have Fox News, hate your fellow American voters, the Democrats, and everybody beat each other's throats and let the rich run out the back door with all the money. The establishment keeps winning, keeps screwing you, keeps running out the back door with all the money, and Americans are at each other's throats. Because that's who your main enemy is. And we covered a poll on this recently where, yeah, most Americans think... The biggest divide is the partisan divide. So they fear other Americans more than they fear the corruption, the wealthy elite who are screwing them, who are rigging the system. And it's terrible. And here we are. And now even the media, what's supposed to be a beloved institution that educates you and is on your side, people know it's not educating you and people know it's not on your side. And so here we are. It's really gross, man. Again, from a selfish perspective, I should be like, cool, because... This helps people like me because I'm an alternative outlet where you can go to get opinions and information. Um, but no, I'd rather have the country be in a better place and I'd rather have the media do a good job overall. So I think these numbers are even going to get worse, man. But there will be zero self-reflection from the media because just like Noam Chomsky's manufacturing consent, he lays out how, you know, the problem really starts with the filtration process. Like, they're only going to hire the people who they know are not going to rock the boat and who they know are going to represent the worldview that they want represented. And so, of course, there's going to be no course correction and no self-reflection, and we're going to keep going further and further down the wrong path. And these people will be just as smug in their little insular bubble, thinking Americans love them, even though now we know the polls show Americans hate the media.